Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Ninjago Legacy Set number 71753, Fire Dragon Attack. This massive set comes with 563 pieces and retails for about $50 in the United States. The dragon is very impressive. This is of course trying to be a legacy revamp or reimagining of Kai's original dragon, Flame, from the earlier Ninjago seasons. In addition to some normal Ninjago legacy figures that we've seen time and time again, you also do get in this set the golden 10 year anniversary version of Nia, which is going to be exclusive to this set, so there's a reason to get the set right there. But also the dragon build is very well done. Being a large dragon, I was very much looking forward to this set. From promotional images and material, I thought this dragon looked really, really good. But in person, how does it hold up? Is it still very good? Well, we're going to be talking about that in today's video, and I will indeed be giving my thoughts on that. In terms of the box, this is what you got going on. Very nice box. I love the cherry blossoms going on in the background. This is what the back looks like. Very well designed box this go round. I really like how this box looks. But going back to the set, yeah, there is a lot to talk about here. And of course, being one of my most anticipated Ninjago sets of the summer, I will admit I was kind of nervous putting this thing together. I was worried that it would not be as good as I thought it was, but let's talk about what I actually think about this set. Why don't we start off this review by taking a look at the minifigures, and then we'll move on to the actual dragon itself. All right, so for minifigures, this is what we got going on. We have three good guys and one bad guy. Why don't we start off by taking a look at that exclusive golden Nia. So, being the only golden ninja that we get in this set, here we have golden 10 year anniversary legacy Nia, or whatever you want to call it. This figure is really, really, really nice. First of all, I love the design choices going on with the actual hair piece. It's the exact same one used in Ninjago Seabounds sets, only colored in the standard Nia colors, which looks really, really good. You got the black hair with the ponytail and the blue headband, looks really nice. You also get one of those blue half mask pieces, which also looks pretty good. In terms of the torso printing, this is what we got going on. I've said in other videos that this torso is really, really well printed. I love the way that the gold and the azure blue blend together. I think that makes for a very excellent design, and overall this figure I don't really have too many issues with. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be representing, perhaps Nia's island or seabound variants perhaps, not too sure about that, but you also do have some leg printing, the exact same legs used on every other golden legacy figure, so nothing too new going on there. Overall, I'm a really big fan of this figure. I think it looks quite nice. You also do get the same stand that you get with the other golden anniversary figures, so nothing too new going on there. Speaking of things that aren't really new, here we have Ninjago Legacy Kai. He is included in the set as the main ninja, and we have seen this design for Kai time and time again. It's the exact same print that we've been getting since 2019, people, but you also do get golden armor this time. Wow, at least they're switching it up a little bit. You also do get Kai's fire sword, kind of a nice inclusion, can never really have too many of those. I think that looks really good. It's the exact same piece that's been used for about 10 years now. So this figure is pretty much all reused parts reused pieces, reused designs. We've seen this figure time and time again. It was fun when it came out two years ago now, almost three, but uh, now I'm kind of getting tired of seeing this version of Kai, although this is indeed appropriate for the set. The same thing can be said for this version of Zane, which we've seen time and time over and over again ever since 2019. Um, yeah, nothing really too new to talk about here. He does indeed have his golden shurikens, which you do get extras of, which is nice, and like I said, this figure is pretty much the exact exact same Zane that we've been getting since March of the Oni, except it's got golden armor this time. Wow, we've seen that before too, so nothing really too new about this figure, though I do question why they chose Zane for this set. I much rather would have seen maybe Cole or Lloyd even, but uh, you know, still really cool inclusion, nothing too much to talk about here, it's the exact same Zane that we've been getting for years, what else do you want? In terms of bad guys, Whiplash is the only villain that you get in this set. I would have loved to have seen maybe a vehicle or a battle stand or something for him, but no, he just comes like this, as we've seen him before. I really love the skeleton face and the sword and the hat. It's Whiplash. What do you expect? It's the exact same Whiplash that we've been getting for a long time now. For minifigures, there's really nothing of actual importance in this set, aside from, of course, the Golden Nia figure. That is the only brand new one that we get in this set. I'm kind of sick of seeing Whiplash, so here's what I'm going to do. See ya, Whiplash. Let's get to the dragon. Let's bring that beast out. All right, here we have the dragon, and this thing looks gorgeous. I love the way that this dragon actually looks. I think this dragon looks very intimidating and very beastly. Just bringing my little hands in here. This is going to be very awkward because this thing is so 
massive looking. This dragon is insane. I love the colors. A very nice use of red, dark red, orange, even this type of yellowish orange, and traditional yellow. This dragon has some very impressive colors. And just look at that wingspan. That is insane. How long is that? I don't know. I don't have a tape measure, but here it is compared to a minifigure. That's for scale. Look at that. This dragon is huge, as it should be. A dragon like this should be quite massive. All right, so starting off with the head sculpt, the head is quite beautiful. This is the exact same head mold that's been used on some other dragons before. I believe especially juniors themed dragons, but I feel like it works very well with this actual fire dragon build. The scale is quite nice. I think it looks really good. In terms of neck posability, you do get some. Obviously, the head is going to be on a ball joint, so you can move that around every which way you want. Uh, ball joints are basically free moving joints. You can do whatever you want for that. There's also an additional ball joint on the base of the neck right here, which allows for even more posability. So you can get some pretty, some pretty wild poses here. He can look down that far. He can look up that entire way if you want. And obviously the head does indeed have a opening and closing mouth, which just works like that, you know, just clickety clackety all the way through. There is also some places inside the, the head where you can put stuff. I know some other dragons have used that spot for tongues or whatever. The fire dragon does not get any of that. I feel as though the head sculpt, however, is very, very good. I love the colors on it. I think it looks really nice, especially when compared to the rest of the actual body itself. You can also operate this part right here and look down and up even further. And there are indeed clips on the back of the neck, which are designed to interact with this additional thing that you get in the set. It's basically a little seat for Kai. He just kind of sits in there like that. Kai's nice symbol is printed on the back like so. And attaching that to the actual base of the neck is quite simple. Just pops in with clips like so. And now Kai can actually be commanding the dragon. I love how Lego gives you that option here. This set has a lot of freedom to it. You can basically pose the dragon any way you want with or without Kai. I usually like to display him with Kai, however, because these two are the best of friends. Moving down a little bit more, this dragon has been hitting the dragon gyms. This dragon is built, quite literally. You can see some very excellent design work going on with the belly. These look like, uh, what's the proper term? pectorals as well as the nice little dragon ab section here down there who knows man this dragon is just shredded <laughs> i really like how that looks it could indeed be trying to replicate scales but to me this dragon just looks just looks buff i really like how this dragon looks in terms of other uh, articulation and other stuff the wings are also pretty much the exact same from either side so we're just going to be focusing on one wing first of all for rotation you do have a ratchet joint right here which allows for obvious forward movement and you can rotate it back like that these wings are extremely posable as well. The wings themselves also do indeed fold up. They have this really nice fabric print on here or fabric piece. This is almost like cloth material. It's really nice, really high quality, and the print is just gorgeous. It's the same on either side, and these wings can indeed fold up if you want to, which is nice. A uh, little bit of a, uh, what do you call that? A little bit of uh, proper storage going on there, a little bit of convenient storage, but obviously if you're going to be displaying this set, I would recommend having the wings splayed out just like that. This is what it looks like from the back. You can kind of see what's going on there. They use a lot of Technic pieces to make the wings actually fold in. And this is basically what it looks like from the back, all folded up. It's not a bad look and I do like how they give you that option. But for me, like I said, I like to have the wings completely splayed out. My only real complaint about some of the joints is that this ratchet joint on my end is very, very loose. I'm not sure why. This one is proper in terms of its tightness, but this one is very loose and very floppy. You can kind of see what, <laughs> what happens if you're a little rough with with this dragon so I might want to swap out that joint later on not really sure but for right now it's just going to be very very floppy which is kind of unfortunate for stickers you do have some you get a sticker right here sticker right there and uh, that's basically it for the stickers you also get some in the main body of the dragon the claws down here are also kind of uh, weird looking they are on a ball joint so you can move them any which way you want but the claws themselves in terms of fingers it's kind of awkward I do think that the claws could have been designed a little better and I might swap those out later on but overall the wings on this dragon are not too bad. Overall, the wings are a very, very good design. Here's a quick look at the back of the dragon. Like I said, this is quite the nice design. I love how these pieces are sort of trying to replicate spikes. That looks really good. The backs of the wings, like I said earlier, don't look super great. The ideal look is from the front. The legs of the dragon are also quite nice, but still not ideal. For posability, you have all of the same posability that you have on the wings because they use the exact same joints. This ratchet joint here allows for the legs to basically uh, spread like that. And you can kind of see the inside of the leg. You can also move it around like that. It's basically 
basically the exact same ratchet joint that you get on the wings so that's pretty much it in terms of the feet there is no way to pose the feet these are just stuck in place which is kind of unfortunate but you can move these little toenails or claws around to your liking overall the legs themselves are a pretty decent design don't really have too many complaints regarding the legs aside from the lack of feet posability otherwise the knees are pretty much already built in there so yeah all the posability that you would need to stand up the dragon like so is pretty much already there so can't really complain too much about that even though i wish there was still a little bit more articulation especially in the feet and of course what is a dragon without its tail the tail on the dragon is pretty self-explanatory just made up of a bunch of ball joints you can pose the tail any which way you would like and the end of the tail have these two pieces which i have not seen in this color before that's a new one for me but overall the tail is pretty much what you uh, what you'd expect you can pose it any which way you want have it curl around if you want to or if you want to just have the tail straight like so you can indeed do that so in terms of the overall dragon itself, while there are some issues with posing, I think the dragon overall has a very good look going for it. There's a lot of options here in terms of what you can add on and how you can pose this thing, and overall I think this would make any Ninjago fan or fan of Kai extremely happy. This is a very solid dragon in my opinion. It probably looks the best when it's standing straight up or flying through the air. And here is the instruction manual. You only get one manual included in this set, and here is the spent sticker sheet. Every single sticker goes to the dragon. And of course, here are the extra pieces that you get in this set. Not a bad variety right here. So let's wrap it up. How do I feel about this Fire Dragon set overall? Honestly, if you're a fan of Ninjago Dragons, you'll probably have a blast with this thing. Even though there are some issues with posability and design, I feel as though this dragon is a very good representation of the original Fire Dragon from the earlier Ninjago seasons. I think that this is a very good legacy upgrade, and even though there are some issues, like I said, I feel like the dragon overall is very good. I want to see other dragons like this in the future, so fingers crossed LEGO actually releases the other three original dragons. Minifigure selection in this set is also not super great, but I feel like it is appropriate. That Golden Nia figure is almost worth getting the set just for that, but the dragon build itself is also very good, so I feel like this set itself will be a very good value to most Ninjago collectors. If you are only able to get one set from this Ninjago summer line, make it this one. This one is worth it in a lot of ways, and I feel like this will be the standard for Ninjago dragons in the future. So with that being said, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today thank you so much for watching leave your thoughts down below in the comments regarding what you think about this set and what do you think of the video itself leave all your thoughts down below in the comments you guys and hopefully you enjoy it if you did feel free to like comment subscribe do all that fun stuff and check out the links down below in the description for other forms of social media as always big shout out goes out to my patreon supporters including once again the marvelous jan thank you guys so much for checking out this video once again my name is tanner fishes and with that i bid you farewell